Hey guys, my name is Mal and I'm gonna show you how to create your Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster with K3S on Alpine Linux. I won't go into details about what is Raspberry Pi, Kubernetes or Alpine Linux, because they are whole and other topics. Basically, Raspberry Pi is a credit card size computer, Kubernetes is a container orchestration tool and Alpine Linux is a very lightweight Linux distribution that generally used for containers. In our case, because we're gonna use ARM architecture here, I think the Alpine Linux is the best choice we have due to its low system resource usage. This tutorial will not be exactly beginner friendly because you should already know what is Kubernetes and Alpine Linux and a couple of basic Linux commands. Before we start, we need some hardware. Because we want to create a cluster, we need at least two Raspberry Pis. I got one 2GB memory for the master node and 8GB memory for worker node. Because of the low resource usage of Alpine Linux, after you install the base, the system only uses 40MB memory. And after setting up Kubernetes master node on the 2GB version of the Pi, I've seen the memory usage of approximately 40%. And since we're not gonna schedule any Kubernetes paths on the master node except for the system nodes, this 2GB version of the Raspberry Pi is the best choice for building the master node. Then we can get two Raspberry Pi cases if you want. In case you're gonna add more nodes to the cluster in the future, you can get acrylic cluster cases or print a 3D custom case for your needs. Then of course we need two power adapter. Then you'll need one micro HDMI to HDMI cable for the first time booting and installation. In this part, you'll also need a monitor and a keyboard, but I'm assuming you already have those. After that, you need a gigabit network switch with at least three ports and three Ethernet cable. Two of them could be really short for the Raspberry Pis, but for the other one, you need to measure your distance from your working space and your modem. Then we need two class 10 micro SD cards for at least 16 gigabits for the storage. And that's it. All parts come together, I spent approximately 2000 Turkish Liras on the cluster. If you look into the cloud providers, DigitalOcean is the cheapest one. And if you create a Kubernetes cluster on DigitalOcean, you will spend at least 40, approximately $50 a month. And if you don't build your own cluster with Raspberry Pis, you will spend that money on DigitalOcean for only 4 or 5 months. Google and Amazon are the, of course, hires. So, creating a Kubernetes cluster on Raspberry Pis is a really good choice if you have a stable internet connection and electricity. Now, we can start on building the cluster with formatting the SD card on any Linux machine. After inserting the SD card, we need to find the name of the device. You can list the block devices with the lsblock command. In my case, the name is mmcblock0, so I can just show you the device with grab. You can also list all the devices in your system with sdisk-l. If you use it with the device name, you can see all the details of the SD card. And don't worry about the duos, it's just a BSD version of the sudo command. I'm just executing the command with root privileges. When we find the correct device and want to start the format, we can get rid of the dash L parameter and just type fdisk with the device name. Now we're in the fdisk utility. We can type M for the help, you can see all the options. If we're partitioning a new drive, before starting to create partitions, we need to create a partition table. As you can see, fdisk supports several. MBR and GPT are the most popular partition standards. There are so many differences, I'm not gonna go into detail and just gonna use the MBR with typing O for created DOS disk label. If you want to see the current state, just type P for print. As you can see, there is no partition. So we need to create a new one with the N. This will be the boot partition. P for the primary. I'm just gonna accept the defaults for the partition number with the first sector, but for the last sector, we need to create a fixed size. We can use plus 500 capital M for 500 megabytes. Don't worry about the red warning that's here because I already formatted the device. We can remove the signature or not, I'm just gonna say yes. If we print, we can see our 500 megabyte partition and its name is MMC block 0 p one but we need to change the type. It needs to be FAT32 to boot on Raspberry Pi. So T4 types, we can list all the types with capital L. As you can see on the top left, we need 0B for the FAT32. And we also need to type A for adding the bootable flag on this partition. Now when we print, you can see the boot flag is on, size is 500 megabytes and the type is FAT32. The last partition is for the file system. I'm just gonna go with the defaults for using the remaining sectors of the SD card. Second partition is already selected as Linux but if it's not, you need to change the type again with T, select the second partition and hit the number 83 for the type. Now we have two partitions. First one is 500 megabyte bootable FAT32. Second one is the rest of the drive for operating system. This is not saved yet. We need to type W for writing changes to disk. 
Now we need to format the partitions to make file system with makefs command. With root privileges, we need to execute makefs.wfat with the boot partition and in my case it is slash dev slash mmc block 0 p1 for formatting the fat32 and exe4 for the second partition. We're done with formatting and you can see the device with partitions with typing fdisk-l with the device name. Now we need to download the Alpine Linux image. On their download page down to the Raspberry Pi section, you can see the R64 image. I'm creating a new directory under temp and download the image. After it's done, extract the files with tar-xf and after that I'm just gonna delete the downloaded image file. Then I'm gonna create a new directory to mount the SD card and copy these files to the card. To mount the boot partition, type mount slash dev slash mmc block 0 p1 and the directory. In my case, it is slash tmp slash sd with root privileges. And be careful here, I'm mounting the boot partition with p1 on the end. Now I can copy the Alpine Linux files to the SD card. Of course we need the root privileges. I'm using duos but you'll probably need to type with sudo. Now I can get out of this directory and unmount the SD card. And that's it. Now we can plug in the SD card to the Raspberry Pi and boot from Alpine Linux. Now we need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable adapter, a monitor and a keyboard. When we connect everything with SD card and plug the Raspberry Pi into a power source, we'll see the boot screen for Alpine Linux. And don't worry about the architecture here because I cannot record the screen when I'm connected to Pi for the first time. I'm gonna show this part on a virtual machine. After the boot screen, we can go in with the root user without a password for the first time. To install the operating system, they have a built-in tool called setup-alpine. When we execute that, first we'll set the keyboard layout and a hostname. This is for the master node, so I'll type master-0. Now we need to set a static IP address for the master node. For this part, you need to know the leasable IP address pool range for the network. You can find it in your modem's interface. I'm gonna set 192.168.1.149/24 with CIDR for the machine's IP address and 1.1 for the default gateway for this example, but my actual PIs will have 150 and 151 addresses for the master and worker nodes. After setting up the IP address, you can type your domain name if you want to use, and for the name server address, again I'm gonna type in my router's default gateway. Then you can change the time zone if you want. I'm not gonna use a proxy, so pass on with none. For the rest, I'm just gonna go with the defaults. For the this section, you're probably gonna see and should type MMC Black Zero for the device name of the SD card. So I'll type the device name. If it says device is not found and you want to unmount it and search again, you can say yes. After that, we will have various options for the disk installation. I'm just gonna go with the traditional system mode. It'll give you a warning about the disk will be erased, say yes. Now we install our system and we can reboot. After the first boot, we'll go in with the passwordless root login again. When we type if config, we can see our static IP address. We can test the connection and we have internet access. We can also manually edit the slash etc slash network slash interfaces file and change your IP address if you want. Just don't forget to restart the networking service after you change something. So I want to connect my PIs without using an additional cable, monitor and a keyboard. Therefore I need to change the SSH configuration a little bit. We already configured static IP addresses, now we can go into the slash etc slash sh slash shd underscore config file with any text editor. I'm gonna use vi because it's already installed in our system. Then find the permit root login section, uncomment the line and change it to yes. And also you need to set the password authentication to yes. Then save the file and restart the shd service. 
Now I can switch into my Pi from my home network with any device and I don't need to connect the console with HDMI cable ever again. This process was an example and I have actually installed the Alpine Linux on my master node with the IP address 192.168.1.150 and for the working node the IP address is 151. Now I can connect to the master node and create the Kubernetes cluster. First I'm gonna delete the VPA supplicant package because I'm using cables and I don't need Wi-Fi connection. After that I'm gonna change the main repository pool link from HTTP to HTTPS. This part is also optional but I like to do it anyway. Then I'm gonna update the package manager with APK updates. For the first thing we need to create a Kubernetes cluster is disabling swap. Swap is actually very useful for operating systems because you can store information from memory using hard disk space. But it is known that Swap is hardly used in Kubernetes and should be disabled because Kubernetes doesn't work with the nodes that Swap is enabled. We can turn off Swap by typing Swap-A. Normally this will not be a permanent solution. You also need to delete the line for Swap from slash etc slash fs tab and reboot. But in Alpine Linux in Raspberry Pi you don't need to do that. You can see if the Swap is off by typing free-m you should see zeros on the Swap line. In order to work with Kubernetes you need to enable some C groups. For that we need to open slash boot slash cmdline.txt file then append this three part to the end of the first line. C group enable CPU set, C group memory 1 and C group enable memory. Then we need to add C groups to the default boot order to start on boot. Now this part is optional. I'm gonna set up my Kubernetes clusters flannel backend with WireGuard. Therefore I need to install WireGuard-tools package from Alpine repository with apk add and the package name. After that I need to enable the WireGuard module, then adding WireGuard to the etc modules file to make it permanent. Now I can reboot with nearest C groups are added and WireGuard module is enabled. I'm just waiting for the Pi to boot. Now we can check if the C groups are enabled with reading proc cmd line and check the cgroup service with rc-status. Now we can download the k3s arm executable. For that we first need the vget package and from the link we got on k3s's github page we can download the file. After it's done I'm gonna make the file executable with change mode plus x and the file name. Then I'm gonna move the file to my path for calling just with the name and change the name to k3s. Now I can call the tool with k3s-h for help and it's installed and working. Now I can create my master node for Kubernetes. Every command in Linux starts a process at the time of its execution, which automatically gets terminated upon exiting the terminal. If we use the nohub command to execute, it will run the process even after the login out from the shell. So nohub k3s server backslash for the next line dash dash flannel dash backend wireguard we already installed WireGuard but this part is optional. After that the node taint parameter is for telling the Kubernetes to not schedule any part on the master node except the system nodes. In default K3S will not start the master node with taint. Therefore you can fill the master node with user paths and deployments and this might cause the Kubernetes master to not function properly and you cannot use the worker nodes either. That's why not using master nodes for the user deployments is a good practice for Kubernetes. Then I'm gonna disable cloud controller because we don't need them. For the last, with this symbol, we'll say to the operating system to execute this command on the background. And nohub will record the session on the file name nohub.out. We can read that file line by line with tail dash f to see the process. We can exit with Ctrl plus C and check if our node is working with kubectl get node. At first I forgot to mention that you don't have this kubectl tool. To install you need to open the slash etc slash apk slash repositories file and comment the edge testing repository then update the repository pool with typing apk update. After that you can install with apk add kubectl. Now in order to access our Kubernetes cluster we need the kubeconfig file which k3s extracts it to slash atc slash rancher slash k3s slash k3s.yaml by default. 
If you want to access it without mentioning the file name, we first need to create a .cube directory in our home. Then copy the default config file under that directory and change the name to config. Now we can type kubectl get node and as you can see our master node is ready and working. If we add the dash o white parameter at the end, we can see additional information. And if we look into the system path, containers are creating. And if we hit kubectl get path dash capital A for the all namespaces, we can see all the components are ready and working. And now we're done with the master node. For the worker node, we're gonna do the same couple steps like in the master node until the execution of the K3S tool. I'm gonna just fast forward these steps. Now I have everything I need to create the Kubernetes worker node, but in order to connect with the master node we need a token, so we should exit from the worker and log into the master. You can find a token with reading the var lib rancher k3s server node token file. After copying the token, we can exit from the master and log into the worker again. Now we can use the k3s tool to create the worker node. In K3S, worker nodes are called agents, so with nohub K3S agent dash dash server with the server IP and the port for the Kubernetes control plane, then we paste the token like this, and add this symbol again to execute this line on the background. If we read the nohub file again, we can see the cluster is initializing. Now we can get R from the worker node, then log into the master node and check if our worker node is connected to our master with typing kubectl get node. As you can see our worker node is also ready. And that's it. This is how you can create a Kubernetes cluster with master and worker nodes on Raspberry Pi 4 with Alpine Linux. If you check the description, you can find the SD card format and the node installation videos for copy and paste the lines with ASCII NEMA tool. And thank you for listening.